So I started with the tailgate lock because I want to have one key doing all the locks on my restoration. Now, after getting the tailgate to match the ignition key, I'm now going to work on the glove box. You can see how heavily worn the original key was. That's not acceptable. That's not going to last long for all of the locks. And originally I was looking at this going, what's going on? Because I couldn't get the lock out and I sort of understood that that little silver tab on the top, which is marked um, Oben or Uben or apologies for the terrible German, I couldn't get it out. So I did a little bit of gouging with a fine tool and then the simply the pin comes out and the lock slides out very easily. Now what's beautiful about this compared to any of the other locks with external access like the handles or the boot tailgate is that this lock is immaculate. There's no crap or grease or debris in there. What is also interesting is there is actually only five leafs in there. So it is the same pattern of leafs or wafers, but there's only half of them, probably because they thought, well, um, it doesn't need to be as secure. So to reprogram these keys, as you've already seen, all you need to do is know which pattern you need. Now this is my ignition key. I've got three of the keys. It does not currently fit because it does not fit those wafers. Having done the tailgate, I know what the pattern is and I've written down the external 10 leaves in order and the leaves are numbered one to four, although in later models they were numbered slightly differently, I believe, but they are analogous. And you can swap, for example, a number one, I think it was with a 65, if you happen to have that set up. So the old key's fitting, the new key is not because it's not coded yet. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna take out the existing leaves, we're gonna see what they are, and then we're gonna put the last five leaves in for our known code that we've done on one of the other locks. As you'll have seen in the other videos that I've done, um, you need to know that pattern, and that's done, uh, that can be done without knowing what it is, it's just trial and error. So you can see how they're all clean, uh, the number of the leaf, which you'll see up close later, is written on that little tooth hanging off the side. Now each of these leaves in the little circle there has a small spring attached to it and that's what pushes them out when it's not uh, having the key in position. So I'm just removing the remaining two leaves and there's only the five compared to the usual 10 for any external lock. Being careful your springs don't come fly out and those springs are in beautiful shape too because they weren't exposed to all the grease and rubbish. Don't lose those springs, do this. Do not do this on your carpet. Uh, do it on a uh, nice clear area because if things fly off and you do not have spare parts, you're in trouble. Now, to do this job, um, you're either very lucky or you want to have a few spare handles to take out some spare leaves. Now, for example, I know that this last one was matching to that code. So that can go in, that's fine. But for example, if you've got five leaves um, and the leaves are from one to four, you're probably not gonna have the combination you need. So there's an old lock. This is horrible, it's an external door handle lock. It's the same leaves. And all I'm doing is taking these out to clean them up and make sure I have the combination of leaves I need to insert. So you'll see in a second, these will clean up. I'll show you the numbers. And again, if you're just doing this manually, because this is the only lock you wanna do, um, it is a simple trial and error thing that will only take you about 20 or 30 minutes, I reckon. So there's a horribly grubby leaf. You can wash this however you want. I'm lazy, so I just put it on the polishing wheel. Do it a few times and they come up nice. And what I'll show you in a sec is, for example, where the number is written. So there's leaf number one. So you may need lots of ones. You may need a combination of uh, twos and threes. Um, just working your way through. And I'm gradually inserting them into those final five slots in the combination that I know. So that's an example of a, a grubby spring um, that's flown out. So they just go into that little circular slot and then you put the leaf in and that's what elevates the leaves out when the key's not in position. Now, when you're handling this on the bench, um, if you have a key in position, it will hold those leaves in there. Now, I'm trying in the new key from my ignition tumbler and slot straight in. And what you wanna see is everything is flush, you can see there, and it can't even be a millimeter out, it has to be flush like that. If it's a millimeter out on one side, it's too proud on the other. So that's now looking good. And 
That should have done the job. Now all you need to do is simply put that back in. You can see that it spins around. And then I'm ready to put that little middle tooth back in there just to hold it in there. So just simply pushing that back in. And now this is another joy inducing moment in that the key now works, the new key of which I have three. In contrast, um, I'm just trying all three keys there and one of which is the valet which won't fit. See the valet doesn't fit, that wasn't supposed to fit the glove box or the boot um, back in the days. Now the old key no longer fits because it is not keyed and that can go in the bin because it's worn like a blunt butter knife. So the new key, once again, straight in. And the only difficult thing of this task is getting that off the glove box lid, which is gonna be another video.